So welcome to part two in this series. So in this video we're going to focus on laying out the components for our circuit board, designing the circuit board, laying down the copper tracks and ultimately generating Gerber files which is necessary in order to order PCBs from companies such as JLC PCB. To begin we're going to open up the .kicad PCB file in our project tree and this is what the PCB editor looks like. And to start off, we need to load the netlist we generated in the previous video. Now, it should automatically find the netlist, uh, but if it doesn't, you can use the browse function and browse for the netlist. And I'm just going to hit update PCB and then hit close. And now you can see all the components are lumped together. Let's take a look over here at the right hand side. We can see we've got uh, all these colors and each color represents a layer in the circuit board. Now in order to understand how to use these layers we first have to understand the layers that make up a circuit board. So here is a simplified PCB that's going to explain the layers for us. So if we take a look from this aspect we can see we've got a copper trace, we've got a copper through hole, we've got some text, and we've got a green layer on the top and the bottom. So now let's take a closer look at the layering system in KiCad. If we mouse over one of the layers, we get to see the full description for that layer. So we've got front copper layer. So in our example, this would be this layer right here and the copper trace on top. Bottom copper layer. And some of these layers we don't need to pay any attention to because we don't need to edit them. So I'll gloss over the ones we won't use. Uh, front silks is the silk screen on the front of the board, so that's the white text over here. Uh, this is also the layer where you can apply names and logos to. The front mask is the green transparent layer that goes over top of the copper to insulate it and provide protection. The bottom mask is exactly the same but on the underside. Eco One User is a layer where you can draw graphical designs and this might be useful if you need to give components a certain amount of space around them and you want to visualize that while you're designing the PCB but it's not actually a layer that ultimately uh, makes it into the end product of the PCB it's just more for the designing process. Um, edge cuts defines the size of the uh, PCB so we'll go over that in further detail when we get to that point so when we import the netlist into the PCB editor, all the components are just lumped together. Now we need to arrange them in a fashion that makes sense and is orderly. And what I mean by that is, for instance, R3 has to be connected to D1. And we can tell that because we've got a white trace which follows the connections around. So it wouldn't make any sense if R3 was at one end of our circuit board and then D1 was over here. So I need to arrange these components where the runs are as short as possible and all the components have enough clearance from each other but there isn't any wasted space either. Oh, well look at that, through the magic of editing it's all done. Now you'll notice there's two lots of text on screen. We've got the white text and we've also got the turquoise blue text here. The turquoise blue is the front silk screen layer and that's the layer which will be in white printing on top of the circuit board. This white text here is only for our reference while we're designing the circuit board. It won't, won't actually make it into the final product. So I like to turn off this white text because it can get quite annoying. So I'm going to go over here and turn that off and that immediately starts to clean up the design. But you, you'll notice some of the field references for the components overlap. So we need to move these about. Now you'll notice when you start to move a field reference, there'll be a blue line that attaches it to its corresponding component. So I'm going to place that there. Right, so now my field references are all in order and easy to understand. So you'll notice in the background there is a grid of white dots. We can change the grid spacing by using this menu. And this is useful because not only do the components snap to points within that grid, but so do the copper tracks. So sometimes you'll need to change the grid in order to route copper tracks 
uh, evenly around other components. If you're not familiar with what a via is, basically in a nutshell a via, think of it like a pin that goes from one side of the circuit board to the other and connects two copper tracks so we can have a copper track start on the top layer then we have a via that passes all the way through and connects the top copper track to the bottom copper track and lastly we have our copper track width that we can select from so by default there's only one so if we need to add different options we can click on edit predefined sizes and under tracks and vias we can add extra sizes so I'll add 0.5 millimeters 1 millimeter and 2 millimeter and you can also add different size vias over here if you want so I'll hit OK now in order for us to know the correct width copper trace we need to be using we can use tools such as this PCB trace width conversion calculator now it's a mouthful so here we've got our data inputs so let's say my circuit's going to use half an amp and when it's referring to thickness here it's asking us the thickness of the copper layer on our circuit board so when we order circuit boards we've got the option normally for either one or two ounce per square foot copper thickness uh, I'm going to stick with one ounce per square foot for this example and for most circuits that'll be just fine let's say I can tolerate a 20 degrees Celsius temperature rise and my ambient temperature is 30 degrees Celsius uh, we don't have to worry about trace length and I'm going to change the output unit to millimeters so in order to carry half an amp of current we only need a trace that is 0.19 millimeters thick so I'm going to select one millimeter thick copper tracks uh, I'm going to work on the front copper layer first so I've got that selected and now we're going to click on route tracks now my preferred method is to leave the bottom copper layer exclusively for all the ground connections because we can add a ground plane later on makes it super simple for all the ground points and that leaves all the other connections on the front copper layer which is what I'm working on now so all the white traces you see between the uh, footprints of the components are electrical connections that have yet to be made they will automatically disappear once the uh, once a copper track connects one point to another point so I'm going to start off on this connection and you'll notice when we click on a connection uh, it highlights all the other connections that uh, are all electrically connected together so I'm going to start connecting all these points together so I've had a bit of a roadblock here in my design I need to connect this connection to this connection but the component is surrounded by other copper tracks and won't allow me to connect these two points together so how do we get around a situation like this so one way we could get around this problem is by selecting the bottom copper layer and then we can run a track from that component to that component and it's done and you'll notice that the copper tracks are color coded to what layer they're on so the red is the front copper layer green is the bottom copper layer but I, as I mentioned earlier I like to try and leave the bottom copper layer as a ground plane so let's look at another alternative what we could do is delete this copper trace here go back to my front copper layer and we could route the copper trace around like that and then that leaves us an opening to connect these two connections the other method we could use is by adding a via so I'm going to start off by selecting one of my connections and I'm going to drag a copper trace out to here and I'll lay the copper trace down press escape to cancel and then I'm going to come over here and select add vias we're going to place a via right there then I'm going to switch to my bottom copper layer go back to route tracks click on the via I placed before and then route the copper track over to there and that's how you add vias to your projects so with some careful planning I should be able to place all my connections on the front copper layer and I shouldn't need to add any vias 
So the only connections that I haven't made yet is the ground connections and I'll be showing you how to add a ground plane in a moment. But first I want to add some mounting holes to my circuit board so that I can use some screws or whatever to secure the circuit board in place. So to do that we're going to click on add footprints, left click on the PCB editor and that will open up the footprint library. And then we're going to scroll down to mounting holes and here you can select what size uh, mounting holes you want. I like to choose 3.2 millimeters, that's the one I'll go with. I'll get rid of this bit of text because I don't want that printed on my front silk screen. So now I've got my four mounting holes laid out, we start to get an idea of how big our circuit board will be. So now we're going to click on the edge cuts layer and we're going to click on add graphic lines. And what we're doing now is defining the size of our circuit board. So I'm just going to draw a box around my circuit. If you're making your circuit board to a specific dimension, you can always use the measure distance tool and select two points, then you'll get a readout of the measurement. So it is 36.83 millimeters long by 29.21 millimeters high. So now I can add my ground plane on the bottom copper layer. So I'm going to select back copper layer and I'm going to select add filled zone. I'm going to start off by selecting this point here and then it's this option menu is going to pop up and we're on the correct layer, we're on the bottom copper layer and it's asking us what net class to assign this to and we need to select ground and then press OK and I drag a line down here and click come over here and click and come to this point and double click and just like that we have made a ground plane and if we zoom in we can see that all the ground connections have these little tabs which extend out from the ground plane and they are all connected now. So at this point we've finished our design. So the final thing before exporting the Gerber files is to run this tool here, perform design rules check. This is basically an automatic um, checking robot to make sure our design meets the specifications so we can add minimum track width, via size and so on and make sure our design fits those specifications. So I'm going to hit run DRC and under problems and markers, no problems there, everything's fine. But there is a problem under unconnected items. And we can see right here I have forgotten to connect these two uh, footprints together. So I'll go back and make a copper track between those two points. Go back to the checker. I'll hit delete all markers. Run the DRC again. And this time there is zero errors. Now one really cool feature of KiCad is we can go up to view. And then click on 3D viewer. And we get a preview of what our circuit board looks like uh, with the components no less. Look at that. And this is a great way of checking your design before ordering your PCBs. Make sure all the footprints look right. Everything's spaced properly. Looks really neat. Now you'll notice our uh, circuit board has quite sharp edges. And because it's fiberglass, uh, they can actually be quite sharp. Sharp enough to cut you. So there is a little trick I like to do to round the corners of the circuit board off. So I'll close that and I'll go back to my edge cuts layer and I'm going to delete my lines and then we're going to choose this tool add graphic arc so I'm going to select here I'm going to drag out and then I'm going to make an arc I'm going to go back to add graphic lines and then I'm going to join the arcs together. Go 
Cool. Now I'll go back to the 3D viewer. And now you can see the circuit board has a fillet on the corners, no sharp edges. Very nice. The last thing I want to do is add some logos and some text onto the white silk screen layer. So let's look at that now. So I'm going to click on add footprints. Left click to open the footprint library. I'm going to scroll down to symbol. And this is the default symbol library. So you can have a browse through here and find one you like. You'll notice that um, some of the logos, they, they end with copper or silk screen. So optionally, you can uh, actually add a design into the copper layer. Or if you choose the silk screen, it'll be the white text on top of the circuit board. So I think I'll try this one. Uh, you also notice there's different sizes, 5, 6, 8, 12 millimeter and so on. So I'm going to choose this design. And I think I'll place that down there. And I'll add some text. We can choose what layer we want the text to appear on. So I'm going to choose front silks. We can change the size of the text, the thickness and so on. Whether we want italic, that's all fine. And I'll place that up here. I like to add version numbers to all my circuits, so if in the future I have a revision, I know what circuit boards are old and which ones are the new ones. So I'll call this one version 1.0. Select the front silk screen layer. And we'll place that over here. So let's go back to the 3D viewer. And there we go, we've got a nice KiCad logo here. How to make PCB version 1.0. So now let's export the Gerber files to get this PCB into production. So to generate Gerber files, first click on File, come down to Plot, Plot Format, Gerber. All this is the default setting, so you shouldn't need to change anything. Um, you, all the default layers that are selected will be fine. We don't need to change any of those. So we need to select our output directory. So I'm going to generate a new folder and call it Gerbers inside my project folder. I'm going to select that. Do you want to use this path? Yes. And then we're going to hit plot and we'll get a list of all the Gerber files that have been created. There's a Gerber file for each of the uh, layers in our circuit board. And we're also going to select generate drill files. It'll automatically select the same folder. This is all the settings I use. They're all default. And hit generate drill file. Successfully created. Close that. Close that. So here is the directory for my project files that I've been saving everything to. So I'll go into the Gerbers folder that I just created. And here are all the Gerber documents we need. And what we need to do is add these to a zip archive. So I'm going to select all. And I use a program called WinRAR. And it just allows me to uh, select add to gerbers.rar. And it zips all those files into a RAR file, which I can upload to websites like JLC PCB to audit my PCBs from. Now I'll go over some of the options you have when you're ordering your PCBs. So of course I'll show you how to do this on JLC PCBs website. So we don't have to worry about entering in dimensions or any of that information. We can just click on quote now. And now we need to upload our uh, Gerber RAR file we just generated. And you can see once they're uploaded, we get a preview of what the front and back of the circuit board looks like. And the dimensions are automatically calculated from our Gerber files, so we don't have to change that. Basically, you can use all the default settings. You don't have to change anything for most uh, circuit boards. Uh, obviously, the circuit board we've designed has two layers, a copper layer on the front and a copper layer on the back. We can choose from these options for what color we want the uh, solder mask to be. Personally, my favorite is blue. Looks quite neat. Here we can choose the copper weight. This is the thickness of the copper on the front and back of the circuit board. So obviously the advantage with thicker copper is it can carry more current. 
but it does come at a cost. So if you want to know more about any of the available options, you can just mouse over the question mark and you can learn more about what those options do. But for circuit boards like you've seen me design, I can just leave everything on the default settings, save to cart and then go through the checkout process. If you found this video useful, please drop me a like and leave any questions in the comment section. Also let me know what features you would like explained in KiCad. In the next videos I'll show you how to add custom logos and how to design PCBs for high current applications and much more. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.